guys welcome back to another video this is going to be in regard to the pika new free link and pika new free pro this time with the custom display port drivers now i've done a revision on the raw file that i've shared before it will be the same link to download it's going to be changed all of the instructions are reflected to work with new free pro and new free link so you can follow this along it should be super simple to install um i've done my best to try cut all the bloat down there's a few new things in here um most notably going to be the controllers well I, I can't fix capacitive touch that's on that's on pico um nico of uh, pico discord has also found a silly mistake from pico they've missed a forward slash in one of the the text strings which basically meant the back button on the pico controller never worked um it was there it was mapped and you can see it animated but it never worked so a very simple forward slash in uh, in a bit of text has now made that work. And I've gone a little bit further with that. And rather than it being mapped to just the left controller, I've now made it so both controllers can use that button and also the right controller now has a Pico button that works. So I can show that very quickly um, while I'm in Steam VR. I bring up my mirror so you can see what I'm seeing. And I will jump into the controller test. So we now have obviously left hand menu button that's now working it's brilliant system button that's obviously the normal button you would press but as soon as i let go of this is obviously i'm going to get rid of the overlay there's not much i can do about that um the right hand again menu button's working and system menu's working so it's pretty damn sweet um that means you can either use that for custom bindings or in some cases games actually look to this menu button and there's no no longer any need to rebind anything to get your menu button to work so Again, stupid mistake. I've missed that. I've no idea how Nico spotted that. Why would I ever be looking in the control of Jason's? But that's sweet. And that now works. So I jump back to my desktop so uh, I can show you a bit more on the changes here. So bring it up. Uh, let's get rid of this Steam VR window. Go away. Bring up the new RAW file that I've shared. So this is now changed how I do it. Before it was one big dump so one folder and everything was done i've gone back to a two-stage process but there is some logic behind this so the custom dp drivers and tools um the default here is an unlocked driver with just the default chromatic aberration and distortion values you wouldn't ever need to use that but it's there if you do want to do any comparisons the custom drivers step one much the same as before you right click the driver folder and just paste it into your install directory there's instructions and picture to show you where that is for pika neo free pro and pika neo free link and you do need to use the right respective software so business streaming for pika neo free pro you do not use pico link uh, pika link is just for pika neo free link so the only difference really here um this is already configured with my chromatic aberration changes and distortion um the gray controller models in steam vr and the input is now fixed to reflect that working button and also um, for both controllers so that's everything you need to get the custom drivers installed with the presets ready to go um, but it doesn't change the resolution to steam vr so that's stage one copy that in paste that in nice and easy you're done you can fire up steam vr start using it and have some visual improvements and controller um, improvements and then step two, if you do want to change the resolution, um, doing it through Steam VR is the best way, especially going super sampled. Um, the trade-off to that is the Steam VR void environment. If I jump back into the, the mirror so you can see what I'm seeing. The void environment, these white lines on the floor, um, when you do super sample this way on the driver, this home environment does not scale. It, it's um, limited in Steam VR. So don't worry that the, the white lines are going to go horribly aliased. Um, that's completely normal and expected because you're really not supposed to be super sampling this way. Um, but that's purely just the the image quality. It doesn't scale. The actual desktop um, window in the Steam VR theater, you get the, the maximum clamp of about 3,500 resolution on that. Um, and there's no hit to this. So I've shown this with the Steam VR theater gaming. There's no hit to having a, a higher resolution and using the Steam VR theater window this way for your flat games. Um, Within these new files, I've gave instructions how to use this window, um, which is going to look a bit trippy to you at the minute. This window to use 
3D gaming. If you've got reshade installed for your games, you can convert this to 3D and do some 3D gaming. That's awesome, especially with the resolution and the, the quality of DisplayPort. So, yeah, there's a lot you can do here, increasing the visuals. Um, when it comes to games, you're going to have to manage your expectations, especially VRAM. Um, again, there's loads of warnings in the, in the text files and instructions to obviously warn you of pushing really stupid resolutions that I offer here. Um, so let's get rid of this view again and get back to my drivers. Within here, again, these are super simple to change. You've already installed the custom drivers in step one. Step two is quite simply just select whatever resolution you want. I've put the, the values down. These are all simple changes. You can do them yourself, especially if you want to go between two and 2.5. Very easy. I've put that in the instructions how to do that anyway. Select the resolution you want, copy the file, and paste it where it tells you, which I know is already in the driver bin Win64. And I'm just replacing this one here. Um, it's just one change within within that um oops, wrong one. Um within the, the actual ini file, it's just changing the render scale. And in the case of Chris, uh, crystal resolution, I'm changing the recommended target size. So again, there's instructions, everything you can follow, it should be self-explanatory. Um, you only need to do that once if you do want to change things, especially going down a resolution for a heavy game. Just use the Steam VR resolution slider um, to save you backing out of Steam, changing the resolution, going back into Steam. It's your call. However you want to do it, I generally just stick on 2.0 for a, a 3080 Ti, um, which most of the VR games run at perfectly fine at 90 hertz. And then the heavier ones, I just drop the resolution slider down, um, just quick and easy. Um, but yeah, going up the resolution, you don't want to start with anything low and then use the Steam VR slider um, because it just doesn't give you the same pop. It doesn't um, change the whole viewport size. Um, Steam VR has got its own native scaling um, within Steam VR. Um, and when you go over like 220%, the advanced super sample filtering actually down samples that image again. So it makes it blurrier. It's just no point. Um, you can just trick everything into using a really high resolution right off the bat, um, which is very helpful for any games that use DLSS um, because you don't want to use DLSS on a, a low render resolution. You can go up and then bring yourself back down to normal if you can stomach DLSS in games. I personally can. So, yeah, that's um, the two steps basically covered for getting your drivers installed, getting a resolution set. Step three, these are all optional, but they are great. Um, you've got Lero's DisplayPort driver tool, which is basically going to give you a Steam VR overlay that you can, again, select um, the resolution difference and click restart from within headsets. You haven't got to take your headset off. You haven't got to look at your desktop. You can just select the resolution you want and restart Steam VR and it'll apply it, which is awesome. Um, there's options um, here, like optional manual to change to um, the... I'm losing my bloody track of all. Uh, change all the values yourself in the ini files if you do need to do that. And then finally, the Pico panel tool, which is your controller adjustments. Um, that's all exactly the same. All the instructions are there, and they've been updated to reflect use in the new Free Pro with business streaming. All of these have. So everything's been taken care of for you. Um, I'm hoping I haven't missed anything. Like someone's going to probably tell me I have now, but I'll share it and let me let me know your feedback. Um, yeah, there's just loads of new things in here. The file size has increased, unfortunately, but there's a lot of duplicates that have been taken away, such as the the bulk transfers that I've been doing previously. Putting it into two steps makes it a little bit smaller in that regard. It means I could put more stuff in the RAR file. So recommended mods, that's all being covered. I've made some comments, shared my picture of the headset I'm wearing right now. And again, this is super comfortable. It's awesome. It's the headset I use all the time out of all my headsets here. Um, Steam VR tips. Now, I've made a few adjustments to this and added a few more comments. So the 3D gaming in theatre mode, again, you've got the instructions there, how to do that. That's nice and easy. You do need reshade if you're going to do that. Um, and they obviously need to inject to the reshade game before you obviously start even trying to get the Steam VR side to work. Um, controller skins, again, instructions updated for Neo 3 Pro and the business streaming. Controller position tips. Um, I've got so many different games here. I've got a huge library of games, but I'm not going to be able to put all of my stuff down. I've done the most common ones. Boneworks, it gives you a long arm in um, DisplayPort mode, and if you link your arms are way up here. So that's um, that's fixed with my values in here, which is just a simple copy-paste into your um, existing 
uh, any file. So you can do that. And then if you are using the PK panel tool, you could either copy those values or you could just use a PK panel tool to quickly reset um, while you're in Steam VR. Again, these changes do reflect real time the controller adjustments, which is nice. Um, so you haven't got to restart Steam VR for that. But you don't really want to go back to your desktop and mess around with um, files. Just do that once and use Pico Panel Tool to reset your controllers back to normal. Because unfortunately, again, until Pico helped me out here, you can't do um, per game controller adjustments. It is done by the tool. It will save the values in that file as long as you've unlocked it, as the instructions say. Um, controllers gone walkies now. As long as you've unlocked it, um, it will save the adjustments that you make within that file. So you can copy that, note it per game, and just save that and transfer it in if you need it that way. There's very few games I ever really need to make huge adjustments. I mean, there's Boneworks, which is, again, down to the game itself. Um, not much I can do about that. Um, I don't know where my controller's gone. And Pavlov is another one that I've done. Um, there's no need to go into the Pico panel tool. You can just use um, the native built-ins, um, Steam VR controller binding options, and just change it to an index. It defaults to an Oculus. Change it to an index. That works a lot better. Um, and if you do need to fine tune it, then you can obviously use the Pico panel tool to do that. Uh, that's about it, really. I mean, there's just little notes here about how to emulate the controllers the old way if you need Oculus controllers or Vive controllers into Steam VR. Um, and also just the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. While I fixed this ages ago and realized people are obviously still playing this game and have find an issue used to be that you need to edit the game's config file to start as OpenVR, not Oculus, um, and then emulate the Oculus controllers in Vin Steam for the Pico. You don't need to do that anymore. I've made a custom binding within Steam VR, so you should be able to find this and get up and running. So what I can, I've put in here, I don't want to bloat it way too much. Um, and you imagine this takes quite a bit of time to actually um, consolidate and put in. So I've done my best. Everything's all typed up. There's loads of different tweaks, tips, whatever. It's all in here. Um, this should be everything you need. Um, and in all honesty, this is about as much as I can do with the Pico Need Free Link DisplayPort mode until Pico give me a few more breadcrumbs to work with. I desperately still want to fix the capacitive touch on this, but I can't do that on PC that is on the standalone side that I just don't have access to. So that's it. Um, I'm not sure if I can ever show any more tips. I think I've done, done my best. Um, however, this is sort of an ongoing project as you can tell so the dates are always going to be on the the raw file you should see that the links will stay the same so wherever you're grabbing it from this reddit discord whatever um the link's going to be the same but it will be the new updated version um i'm just eager for your feedback because i said this is probably the last time i need to do this if there is anything else that i need to get in here that you think i've missed i'll put it in um and hopefully it'll just be the one one file anyone ever needs using a Pika New Free Link or Pika New Free Pro on PC by DisplayPort. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers, guys. Hope it helps. See you later.